I think it's about time we made a path racer. Uh, so this bike here um, is, well, as you can see, a Hercules. Um, I picked it up, I don't know, last year sometime. Um, just the frame, uh, mainly because I liked the lugs on it. It is a bit beaten, it's very beaten actually. Um, it is uh, been painted, it has been painted, sorry. I have no idea of the original colour because they seem to have done a very good job stripping it down before but they've literally, it looks like maybe just done a coat of black on it and it's all cracked now and peeling and horrible um, so the frame is going to get redone um, the bike itself, I've been really trying to track down what model it is, what date it is but unfortunately Hercules is like a really really tough thing to uh, research um, well when it comes to dating a frame or identifying a frame that you have no idea what it is um, so the badge itself is kind of a good indication of when the date might be um, hopefully you can see on there but it says Hercules Birmingham um, and that gives a, a fairly decent idea of when in the significant history of Hercules that the bike was actually made. So it's a good indication that it's a pre sort of 1960 era. Um, some people say pre 1954 or 56, sorry, when um, they got merged into the one big company with the four others. Um, so apart from that, I have no idea when this bike was made. These lugs are a distinguishing feature of the bike though. Um, I call them I call them arrowhead lugs when I saw them, uh, but arrowhead, if you google that, it will come up with an arrow shape actually on top of here, on the long section rather than the cutout. So maybe they are arrowhead cutouts. Um, I mean to me they look like an arrowhead, so that's why I call them. But I saw them, I liked them, so I bought the frame. Uh, you can see it's rusted. Um, but what I'm going to do is when I do redo this frame, I'm going to line all these lugs in gold. It's going to be a black frame with gold lug lining. There is a serial number on the bike. Um, you can see here, EN5462. Um, but unfortunately, unlike Rally, unlike uh, what have I just been working on? What have I just got? The Elsa Copper. Uh, unlike some of those other companies, there isn't a definitive list that's been published to say, oh yeah, in uh, when it was stamped EN, it was 1946. Um, I mean, just possibly looking at it. We've got the 5462, so I mean that could stand for 1954 and then 62 could be, I don't know, month and uh, day, maybe. Um, it's one, one way of looking at it. But it's, I mean, I would say it's likely to be the 5462 62nd frame made that year and Ian was the date stamp. Saying that though, I, I am trying to date it. Um, I do, I am kind of leaning towards 1950s, 1954, like maybe one of the last Hercules that were made. Um, I mean, it's got this cool little oiler port on the bottom bracket, um, has some nice chunky thick sidewalls on there, on those. Which, I don't know, That's that kind of says an early bike to me. Like the later bikes that I've worked on were all quite cylindrical there. They weren't raised around the edge. Uh, I mean, so it could be, could be earlier than 50s. Uh, like I say, the, the lugs are a dead giveaway to models. You can go through old brochures, old catalogues, and zoom in on the pictures and try and work out by the lugs alone which particular models it could be um, and the 
I mean the button bracket doesn't have them as you can clearly see but the arrow heads on the seat tube on the head tube they do go towards the, the fancier models and if reading it right in the 50s those models had Reynolds 531 tubes for the main tubes so down down <laughs> seat and top tube all 531 possibly possibly unfortunately the one thing that bugs me about this frame is some little bugger decided to cut off the uh, pump pegs here so there should be one there and there should be one at the bottom that can also give you an indication of what the frame is um, some had pump pegs on some didn't um, I'm gonna try and get some more and fix them and make sure it's strong and not rusted in these places because I don't want it to snap uh, that was not shown on the pictures when I bought the frame it was not advertised so it's kind of disappointing um, and what it should also have is a cap on on the uh, crown here it should have a crown cap so I'm gonna look for one of those uh, you can see it's not very well finished well you can't see but I can see here it's not very well finished on the top so it would definitely have had a cap don't know whether it would have been a full one or it would have just been a half but I've seen one that I like maybe it will fit I'm going to take some measurements uh, and that will go on so plans for this bike um, I mean, I'm going to try and work out the history a bit more um, I am going to get this frame completely redone I'm, I was going to try and keep it a bit messy looking but I mean it's just enough, just as much work here to uh, clean up this messy looking and to make it actually look properly distressed and then there's to get it all redone and lug line it so all redone lug line it find a new cap and it's actually going to be a bit of a path racer build so this is what I'm doing with this frame I'm gonna just strip the headset out of it today um, try and dig up any more info on it and then get those pump pegs fixed take to the powder coaters and uh, you can join me again at that point so um here's something interesting um, the forks came with I mean the bike came with a stem already in there um, what I noticed was there was this wedge that was stuck in there as well uh, so I had to get that out but that meant I then could drop the uh, stem all the way down but I couldn't I couldn't do it the forks were a little bit stiff coming out um, they wouldn't drop straight out when I did the top and I had to actually pull them out and then when I uh, found when I started to take the headset apart or take this off, this was kind of loose anyway the bottom, the crown race but as you slide it up, it stops. It does not want to go past this point. Now, I cleaned it up a little bit. I uh, used some emery cloth. I used some emery cloth just to clean it up in case there was like some burrs on there for some reason. And it still does not want to go past this point here. The crown race does not want to go past. So what I found out is it looks like this tube has been repaired or joined together um, in the past it's actually lumped and you can't get the stem all the way down because it gets to this point and then stops so yeah you can definitely see there wow right I'm gonna have to reposition you so here we go uh, I mean I think you can see already on the bottom there's a significant bump but also on the top see that bump is uh, just below the three there's a ridge on the forks possibly where they've been I don't know maybe the steer the forks have been replaced but they just decided to uh, cut wow So, I mean, I don't know what to do now. I could grind it down so that it goes pat so I can get it out. 
but then um I mean then I'm obviously stuck with a stem that I can't get all the way down so uh maybe it's time for some new forks but then I need to get the crown race off I mean why would you do that why would you cut them down quick update before we go to powder coating um it is going to go black and gold gold uh, pinstriping pinstriping and lug lining if I haven't already said um I've got new pump pegs welded on they are just welded uh, it was the quicker cheaper and easier option so we've got pump pegs now I've also whipped the head badge off and um, underneath it's gold I am a little dubious as to whether it's actually gold paint but looking through the catalogues um, if you go by a well, okay, I'm just guessing that the frame is black because it's been painted. But if you went by a black frame and a gold paint on the head badge, then it pulls it back to a Kestrel Club. You have to go like a few years back because um, I think this is a 54. So it pulls it back to a Kestrel Club. The only problem with that is the Kestrel Club doesn't have the same lugs and it is more of a racer. Um, it's the very high end Hercules bikes. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this gold. Um, what I think this is, I think this is an Aston Tourist because it's got the cutaway lugs on the head, on the seat, and on the. Well, it hasn't got them on the bottom bracket, but it's got them on the head and the seat. Um, the Aston Tourist came with black and cream, so yeah, I'm still a bit confused as to what model it actually is, but I mean that's a, a sort of good, good indication as to what it could be, I mean there's hints of blue in there as well, and there are bikes from the 30s with a blue head badge, but they don't have the... Um, Lugs, so it's a tough one. It's a, it's been really well stripped before, not well painted, but it's been well stripped. So apart from this, there's no indication of the colour that the bike was before. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, oh, one last thing. Forks. I can't remember if I put this in before, but I have just filed them down, filed all the high spots out of them um, I'm gonna get a, a, a die and uh, clean up the threads I'm gonna reuse these I think I'm still slightly dubious about the inside as to why it's actually damaged in the first place but I'm going to reuse them and I'm going to have some spare forks on standby. Um, yeah, but apart from that, it's off to the, off to the powder coaters and I'll see you when, they, when the frame's back. And we're back. We are back from the powder coaters. So we took a couple of attempts. Um, <laughs> They did this frame once and let a new guy do it and he kind of um, missed a large section on the seat tube so I had to take it back but they've uh, done it again for me free of charge um, and it's even better finished this time round. I have done my lug lining, um, it went on okay, uh, yeah, it looks it looks pretty tidy but I like the, uh, I like the black and gold. Um, I've just got to do the head badge because I'm going to clean that up and do something with that. As I probably said in the intro, like, I believe this is an Aston Tourist which came with 531 main tubing. So one, two, and three. Um, the frame actually weighs 2.3 kilos as it is, like without any button bracket or anything in there. Um, I'm going to check that against some others and see how well it does. But it's not too heavy, it's not light, obviously, compared to modern frames. Um, 
But the one thing I'm missing at the moment is the Hercules decal, which I was going to put down this tube. Um, for some reason, the uh, adhesive has decided to stick itself to the backing paper, so I can't get it off, so I've got to order a new one. And that's going to go on there. I've also somehow managed to lose the oiler port on here. Um, I took it off, and I do not know what I did with it. <laughs> it's around somewhere, but I can't think of for the life of me where I've put it. Um, so I'm going to order a new one of those at the same time I order the new decal. Um, and then we'll obviously put that on in um, part two, when I build the wheels and that. Forks came out well too. Um, they were done first time round. Looked pretty nice. The only thing I'm missing for these is the crown cap. Um, which I believe should be on there because just having these plain tops it doesn't really sit with me um, I believe it should have a crown on there I have four, four here none of them fit, this is a really narrow crown uh, I think it's about 77mm and all the ones I found are sort of near 85-90mm wide um, or a different style like sloping. This is just flat um, and it has a sort of constant curve as it goes around. So I'm looking for one of those. I'm gonna. It's gonna take a while because they're quite difficult to find. So I'm gonna assemble the bike as it is. And if I find one at a later date, I'm gonna put one on uh, to finish the bike off. So I guess all that's left to do now is to um, actually start assembling the bike which will be amazing seeing it come together finally because I've had this for ages so obviously first start there at the head and work backwards um, and if you've noticed I've had a little clean so it's hopefully that's set some OCD levels down so yeah let's get started Just, just a second here. Uh, put a lamp bracket on to take up that uh, slack in there, and it means I can uh, put a nice fat lamp on the front when I get one. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to replace the forks. Um, yeah, I should have done it before after going through all that detail before about like the expander, blah de blah, yeah yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to replace the forks, because I've got them on at the moment, and if I... Let me just back that off first. I've got it to the point where there's no slack in the bearings. So if I turn the headset round, it gets stiff here. Turn the headset round, turn the forks round. It gets stiff, and it's really difficult to get it round but then it suddenly becomes loose again see it's loose it's loose there but it gets to here and it goes stiff and I'm really having to put the pressure on to get it round it's really stiff and then it goes loose again if I was to loosen the headset up a little bit there's now a bit of play in forwards and backwards, which is no good, but there's still that area where it's stiff and then goes loose. So I think, I think, the forks are bent. Um, 
So I'm going to have to replace them. Um, I should have done it to start with. I should have done it. I think I might also replace the headset as well. Because, um, I don't know. It's, it's a TDC one, um, which, you know, matches the era. But it's something I don't trust about it. Just this whole bike, like, I'm wary of it now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to carry on. Well, I'm going to build the back end of the bike at least. Um, put the saddle in, put the crank set on. Um, and then I will set to building the wheels, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to find some more forks. Get the, get them redone in black and then put those on because it's unfortunate but I think this is uh, damaged. So I've just put these uh, spare forks in. They're off a road bike but they just about fit in. Um, oh, phone's going off now. Uh, insurance. Um, but yeah, this is what they should be doing. They should be spinning round. Really nice and smooth, just like that. There should be no issues with any dragging or anything. They should go all the way around, which mine are not. So, yeah, I'm going to try another set in there just to be sure. But, yeah, I think the forks that are on this bike are bent and I will have to replace them because they're going to be absolutely no good. Okay, so while we're sorting out that fork situation, I'm going to get another set, well, I'm going to use the other set of forks, I'm going to use another headset as well, which is just cleaning up at the moment. Um, we'll just put the rest of the bike back together. Okay, forks, take two. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have I, I shouldn't have risked it with the other forks, to be honest. But I've got these ones done now. 
these ones will fit in nicely. Might just have to trim it down. I'll have to uh, put the new headset in because I'm going to use a new headset as well. Um, so I'm putting this headset in. One, two. That's going to go in, and then we're going to yeah see how these new forks fit. And I might just trim them down so I'm not stacking it super high. Let's get those. Okay, this new headset, new forks are much better. They're not greased up or anything, but they spin all the way around so freely. So, good decision on changing the forks. Um, and they're much better, the headset's much better condition. So, that goes on there. And then we've got all this sticking out the top, and the top nut only really goes to there. Can you see that? If you put it side by side. So there's about four threads or so that I'm going to probably cut off. Um, I could space it and have it sticking out but then it would look kind of weird so I'm just going to trim them off and uh, then we'll get to installing it and make a bit more progress. So if I'm ever cutting down forks, threaded forks, I'll always put the uh, one of the lock nuts on, and that's so that you don't, well you get a square cut, but you can also unwind it and put back into place any threads that you've uh, damaged, there we go, so I've got a nice square cut there smoothed off the inside and this should thread straight back on now whoa dropping everything there we go no drama it's just a precaution because if you just cut it without that you might damage a thread and just roll it over so if you've got that on already when you take it off it will roll it back into place and uh, it will all be fine and dandy so squeeze everything up and install it okay so that looks awesome now awesome but my next major next major decision is what stem to use but these are the bars I'm using the Lautavasa um, I want to try and drop the stem as much as possible to get it low and I've got to use a short stem because the reaches so much on these so they're gonna sit like that but these have a 23.8 mil 24 ish uh, clamp so I either use this stem which is a 23.8 or this stem which is a 25.4 with a spacer I think I'm gonna to have to go for this 25.4 because the the um, bends are so sharp on that that I can't get this round. Um, the only thing is this is a lower stem, this shorter stem, so I can slam it right down and have the bars at that level, which would be great because then I could have a big fat lamp on the front as well. This set doesn't go in quite as far. It's still okay. But I'd like it slammed all the way down. So I'm going to see if I can fit the bars onto the 23.8s. If not, I'm going to have to use this one, 25.4. I have managed it, finally. Um, with minimal scratches as well. 
because this is gloss black and it scratches easy. Um, so what I did was I just got a small, took this bolt out, took the binder bolt out, put a smaller, what's that, an M6, M8, M6, um, and with two nuts in the centre, like so, just pinched one side up to the top and wound the bottom out just to spread the jaws um, and also filed around the edges to make them smooth so it didn't pinch as much but that's in now that is tight and that can go on the bike and slammed okay front calipers on I mean I don't necessarily need calipers I mean if I was gonna go completely like hipster I would just run the uh, fixed on the back but I'm gonna have fixed and free wheel so just in case you use the free wheel brake calipers on um, obviously the old style with the hook and, and I've just tuned up some of these jumble pads to put on I'm gonna try and find some replacements for the others I've got the cartridges because they're all replaceable brake levers we've got some of these bad boys again which will hopefully go on they don't seem to want to go on Okay, so those beautiful brake levers that I found, these ones, they are um, falling apart. They are too uh, small in the clamp size for these bars, apparently. Um, so I'm changing them up for some of these. I need to undo that a little bit. Um, these are just, well it says they're off a shopper, uh, but you know, they'll they'll work on the bike. They'll have a bit less style to them, but nonetheless they will work. And then what I've got to go on them as well, on them, I mean, by them I mean the bars, are some Velo Orange cork grips so I'm not entirely sure oh, they feel horrible you're just meant to push them on and they stay They split real easy apparently. Wow. <laughs> okay, they're good grips, aren't they? They can split. They can't get around but they can't get around corners, so I'm gonna have to trim those off. Um, and probably bring the brake caliper back a bit. That's how I wanted them. Yeah, uh, brake caliper, brake lever. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna trim those off bring the brake lever back okay um well i think i'm gonna um i think i'm gonna leave it there for today uh i mean i've got everything on the bike that can be uh i need to build the wheels now so i think that will be an episode in itself um i need to paint up the badge i need to fix the badge on i need to get the hercules decals um, so yeah, and then it's just putting the brake cables on and the chain. So it's looking awesome. I think it's looking so, so good. The slam stem, Lauta Vassa bars, Brooks saddle, everything about it just looks awesome. Um, so yeah, so happy with it. So glad I changed the forks. That was a mistake, um, trying to use the original forks even though I knew they were damaged. That was a big mistake. So, won't make that mistake again, and I'll also be checking over frames thoroughly in future if I buy them off eBay. Um, but yeah, hope you like the progress of this little build so far. I just think it's a, uh, it looks so good, and it will look so good when it's finished. So yeah, um, if you like the progress, drop a thumbs up, drop a comment as well. Um, if you didn't like it, then uh, thumbs down. Leave a note why, like, I know I made a mistake with the 
forks. Um, I, I, there's not much I can say about that. I made a mistake. Um, but yeah, any of the, any of the pointers that you want to point out, just drop them in the comments. Uh, part two: be building the wheels, doing everything else that I said, and um, yeah, subscribe for that. Subscribe for more videos if you like the content, and I'll see you in the next video.